In our open source 2D space game made with Godot, we have procedural generation of the world. So we create clusters of asteroids around the spawning point. And if I go down, we should see some enemies. Yeah, they are down there. This is the most interesting clusters. So the pirates are uh, protecting it. Anyway, I'm going to show you how it works, like run you through the code. When you download the project, you can find it on GitHub, link in the description, and it's MIT licensed, free to modify, reuse however you want. You are going to land on the game scene when you open the project. The game world and the nodes below it control the procedural generation. Then you have game initializer at the root that makes the bridge between game world and the other nodes here that are mostly for user interface and visual effects. The game world has the station, asteroid, and pirate spawner nodes. These spawn the related uh, elements in the world. If you select these nodes, the game world and the others, each has some properties in the inspector to control the world generation. So the game world has a radius. This is the total radius of the world, maximum. At the moment, it's not infinite, it's limited. Then it has some, um, it's called iron amount, balance, level. This is when we generate the game, uh, we want a minimum amount of resources to mine in the world because uh, the game is about mining these asteroids, right? And you're going to uh, get some of these resources progressively and put them back in the base. So we use this target amount here uh, that the asteroid spawner is going to get and it's going to generate enough asteroid clusters to get above this amount in the world. Then the spawners are in order here. So when you start the game, we first spawn the station at the center of the world and place the player randomly around it. Then we generate clusters of asteroids and then a pirate squad that is going to go to uh, the most interesting unoccupied asteroid. Let's start with the game world script. So if I open it, you can see we have some dock strings in there. Um, but I'm going to go to ready and setup. That's going to um, s generate the world. Basically, we have one random number generator and a reference to the station, asteroid and pirate spawner nodes. And so in that setup function, we randomize the random number generator. Then we connect some signals and we ask the spawners to spawn stuff. But in each of them, note that we pass in our RNG here, random number generator. So we have one randomized seed at the start of the game that we use with all the PCG in the game so that it's consistent and reliable. So you can uh, set the seed manually and will generate the same world every time. So we first spawn the station that places the player at the center of the world. Then we get to the interesting ones. Spawn asteroid cluster. So I'm going to control click on that function, uh, which is supposed to take me to, okay, it doesn't work. I'm gonna go to asteroid spawner and to spawn asteroid clusters here at the top. This is the only public function on that class that has a few properties. So um, we're going to spawn a number of uh, clusters of asteroids based on the target iron amount that we want in the world. And so every cluster we spawn using a function uh, that's going to return the new cluster and the total spawned iron is the sum of all the clusters iron amount. Now, let me go briefly over the variables that we have here. For each cluster, we have a minimum and a maximum number of asteroids that we're going to spawn. So one to five at the moment. Then we have some values to say, well, the clusters have to be at a minimum distance from the station, 800 pixels. So when I start the game, there is a circle around the station that's not so big, but where you won't find asteroids. And we use the world radius, it's the outer ring, 
to uh, put a limit on how far the clusters are from the spawn. Then there's a minimum distance to have between clusters. So when we generate a cluster, uh, it's going to spawn in a small area. And then around each cluster, there is a circle where no other cluster can spawn. Okay, and then each cluster has a radius. Uh, we also have a radius for the asteroids, so they don't overlap too much, although this needs some fix right now. But I'm gonna uh, look at the functions here. So spawn asteroid clusters in a loop until we have the target iron amount, it's going to spawn individual clusters. So I'm gonna go down to this function. This one is going to um, use a while loop to ensure that we spawn a new cluster. And this one is spawned brute force. We generate a random position in our rings. So well, between, uh, do I have that add on to? Yeah, so it's between those two rings here. Magnificent drawing, isn't it? Uh, we're going to generate a random position and then we check all the existing clusters to see if we are far enough for, from them. So this is what this condition does. We um, use, we calculate the distance to the existing clusters, the, the distance between the new spawn position that's random to the existing clusters. And note that we use distance squared two instead of distance two. Um, and we square the distances like that because the performances are faster than calculating the actual distance. Um, because distance squared is um, multiplying spawn position by itself, cluster position by itself, and comparing the values. Same thing here. The minimum distance between clusters, we square it, so that's like multiplying it by itself. And uh, that's much faster than the, the distance calculation using uses a square root, uh, which is much slower to compute. Anyway, uh, if we're well, too close to one cluster, we go back to the start of the loop, regenerate a new position, redo the checks. And so it's brute force, but because the world is big and there's a lot of space, uh, it's not too big of a problem. And there are more complex algorithms if you want uh, the clusters to be really close and you want to um, accurately calculate positions like offsets between them, but we use that simpler solution. So we generate that new cluster with create cluster. This function is just creating a new asteroid cluster, adding it as a child of the asteroid spawner, um, setting its position and spawning asteroids in the cluster. Then it returns the object. So if we go down the rabbit hole, let's see if it works. Yes, to asteroid cluster, it has a function to spawn asteroids as well inside the cluster randomly. And the logic here is similar to spawning the asteroid clusters themselves. We have a minimum count, maximum count. We generate a random number between the two. Then we have a loop that goes over that count and that's going to uh, generate or try to generate some asteroids here. And the logic there again, it's we get a random position in the radius of the asteroid cluster. Then we check that that position is not too close to an existing asteroid. And if not, we create a new asteroid, add it as a child, connect some signals to know when we mine and deplete an asteroid. Uh, we add the asteroid's iron amount to this current node, which is based on the asteroid size. And uh, that's about it right now. So I'm gonna go back up to the game world. After spawning the asteroids, we spawn a group of pirates and it's the pirate spawner node that does that. Let's see, control clicking works this time. So we end up in pirate spawner.gd. And this one, same thing, takes uh, the random number generator uh, and a few more properties. Choice, I have to check what it is. I think we don't use it. Yeah, we don't. Um, 
And so this, this one is going to take a cluster's position and it's supplied by the game world. The game world has a function find largest inoccupied asteroid cluster. Um, so it loops over all the asteroid clusters in the world. So they're an asteroid spawner actually. And it's going to ensure that the cluster is not occupied and uh, it's going to compare the iron amount in the available clusters and return the largest target cluster. Then we pass the position of that cluster to spawn pirate group. And so the pirates are going to have that position as their target position there. Uh, then same thing as the asteroids in the clusters, we um, generate a random number for the squad size and we spawn pirates based on that. Um, I'm not going to cover the AI there, but there's one pirate that's going to be the leader and the others are going to follow them. And we um, are going to pass the cluster position as the target position to the pirate. So you can see it in this loops here. For P and pirates and clusters, set up the squad and we pass in some information that's more related to AI at this point. And that's it. That's how the world gets generated uh, at the moment. Note that we have plans to add infinite generation. Yeah, of course, I, I have to remove uh, that parameter. I just deleted from the function. Huh. Yeah, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't make code changes live. So I'm going to restore the code. So there we go. We generate a world. And uh, going to the project, we have plans to make infinite world generation instead of a small world with a limited radius. You can find that in Godot Procedural Generation, another project, link in the description. If you go to Godot and uh, infinite generation of space, we have some code in there. We just haven't had time to finish it. But uh, we're going to show you how to use different types of noise generators to create a more uh, erratic or a more uniform distribution of uh, asteroids in the world and how uh, you spawn and despawn the asteroids and those kinds of things and how you keep track of what has been mined as well. And we want to integrate that back into our little game that right now is a bit limited because you just have a few clusters. Uh, note that we regenerate new clusters if you mine too much in the world. So uh, right now, if the total amount of resources gets below a threshold of, I think it's 300 by default, um, we are going to regenerate new asteroids. But with that, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, about the procedural generation, uh, let me know. If there are things you want to see about the game, how we did them, also let me know. Uh, I plan to cover some visual effects that we have in there. And I know that some people asked about the AI, so I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. We also have a Kickstarter at the moment. So uh, if you'd like to support us making free and open source projects like these, uh, if you want to get more demos and a new course, you can support us now on Kickstarter. We also have more videos coming on the channel. With that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.